Hey, hello, how do you do? Shady Durex here. So this is going to be a follow-up to my Legend of Everfree review. Um, basically, during that review, I was going a little different in style, and I was trying to show you guys what or how I started loving the movie before I even saw it, and it eventually brought me down. And while I think that review was fine, I actually really enjoyed that review, and I hope to do something similar to it in the near future. Um, I don't think it properly shows all of my opinions of the Legend of Everfree. And so I'm making this follow-up video, this follow-up video to kind of further elaborate on some of the points that I made in that video. Uh, just getting it out there, I totally stole this idea for the Alpha J show. Um, he makes decent videos. Go watch them. So that's what I'm going to be doing now in this video. Um, it's going to be a fairly simple video, and it's going to be freestyle most of it. I do have some points here written down that I want to address, but this is not going to be scripted. So I hope you enjoy all my uhs and ums and you'll probably hear that noise a lot. <laughs> uh, so basically, um, also one thing to know is I just watched the... I just watched Bronies react, and uh, they had some things to say, some things that I disagreed with, some things that I agreed with. Um, so I might be referencing them in this. Um, but just to start off, basically, is I, I wanted to like this movie. Like, I really want to get that out there. I, I love the Equestria Girls series, and I really wanted to like this movie. I went in thinking it was going to be a fantastic movie, because Rainbow Rocks was good, and freaking friendship games, I just adored friendship games. I was floored by how much I love friendship games. And I legitimately like the the Equestria Girl series more. And I know if you come to my channel and you see all my MLP videos, like all of them so far have mainly been negative. Um, which is one of the reasons why I make fun of myself so much with the Apple Buck season because that's one of my favorite episodes and I, I can't seem to get the script down to write it um but basically i i can i i know i seem a bit cynical when it comes to this show and that's because i look at it from a very different perspective um i don't consider myself a brony i don't actually like this show but i appreciate what the show does um and but i do i do like equestria girls like i like equestria girls the series in general equestria girls i like i enjoy watching the movies um and i wanted to like this one um but in the review i just basically showed the things that made me dislike it now some of the things that i did like i want to address those um the first song i really did like i really enjoyed the first song i don't think it was as good as anything in Rainbow Rocks or Friendship Games, but it was Equestria Girls level good. Um, it I, it had me bobbing my head, bouncing along, singing the songs. Another thing is the superpowers. I enjoyed the superpowers. Like I said, I love, I've been waiting for this show to approach the superhero aspect. If you saw my first... Uh, What's this show called? My Little Pony. If you saw if you saw my first My Little Pony video, then you know that I expected superheroes when I first came into the series. And if something has superheroes in it, I'm most likely going to love it. Um, I also liked a lot of Pinkie Pie in this ep in this movie. Um, a lot of times, you know, Pinkie Pie can be too much. Look at me, I'm funny, or she can be a little too much. Uh, look at me, I'm stupid. Um, I didn't feel like she was that in this movie. I felt like she was a legitimately funny and legitimately Pinkie Pie. Um, so I felt the writing on her was good. And I also liked their outfits. Um, I didn't, I can't remember their outfits too much in the actual, in the actual show and in the actual runway thing. The only ones I remember was Applejack's and I liked Applejack's outfit. Um, but their actual superhero outfits, I did like. Um, I thought they looked really uh, awesome on there. On there. On them. <laughs> now, let's move on to the things that I don't like. So I can be a bit more specific on exactly why this movie, like, severely disappointed me. And if, if you remember the meter, I didn't quite reach the levels of hate. I don't hate this movie. Um, do I dislike it the most? I think so. I, 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 objectively speaking, it's better than the first movie. The, the first movie had so much wrong with it. But 
I didn't expect the first movie to be good. When I first went into the first movie, I thought, well, this is going to be a train wreck. And that's exactly what it was. It was pretty much bad. Um, but I thought the people had learned from their mistakes. As a, pardon that. That's my chair. Very squeaky. Um, but I, I thought that the series was learning from its mistakes and getting all around better and better. Um, so when I because I thought this one was going to be at least... I want to say at least like fr the friendship levels of great, and I was hoping it was going to be the best movie so far. This one disappointed me so much, and there's so much wrong with it that I have to say it's my least favorite of the Equestria Girls movies. Um, I don't know if I actually said that in the review. Um, I, I I think I did say it's not as bad as anyway. Moving on to the things that I don't like. Um, first of all, the exposition dumps. This is something I realized that. All the other Equestria girls have had. I did not think that it would be this bad in this movie, though. There was just so many times where the movie was saying, "Hey, this happened. Hey, this happened. Hey, remember when this happened? Hey, remember when that happened?" And because I think it's because the movies are going on. This is the fourth movie. It has to recap three movies and all the events from three movies. The longer you go on, the 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 longer you go on, and the more you're willing to do exposition dumps the longer those expedition dumps are going to get because you have to review more and more and more and more. And it was just, it was getting on my last nerves. Um, but it stops about, I would say, a quarter of the way into the movie. So it's not like the exposition dumps were taking over the movie. And it's not like they were my biggest problems with the movie. Um, this next point is something I actually didn't bring up in the review because it was something I noticed after I watched it the first time. So it didn't make me hate the movie anymore, but it was something I noticed. Where are the CMC? Like, the CMC are some of my favorite characters in the show, and I'm trying to figure out why they weren't on this trip. And the obvious answer is, well, they're too young, obviously. They're too young. This is the class thing. But then following that up is, why are Snips and Snails there? Like, we know Snips and Snails are the same age, or relatively speaking, as the CMC. So, why are Snips and Snails there? And then that brought about another question. Why isn't Diamond Tiara there? And that connected the dots for me. See, they had to make Filthy Rich the bad guy in this movie. And if Diamond Tiara was there, Diamond Tiara is now a good guy in the canon, at least when this movie was made. She could have easily just talked to Filthy Rich. And he would have done whatever she wanted. Um... And I'll get to Filthy Rich in a second. He's another problem I had with this movie. But he's not next on the list. The next one on the list is Twilight being stupid. Oh my goodness. This one, when I first watched the movie, this was the biggest problem I had with the movie. It's not anymore. It's not anymore. But if you've seen my videos, you know that character and continuity are very important to me. And to me, this broke all of that for the sake of the plot and i cannot stand that twilight twilight lets her fear of what she's going to become midnight sparkle say she tells herself i'm gonna become midnight sparkle she's still in me and that that scares me and then when she starts seeing the magic happen that scares even more she's saying this must be coming from me i must be doing this now originally I saw, I completely saw, and I completely understood Twilight. However, Sunset is like, hey, let's talk about this. Let's see, let's see why this is happening. And Twilight's like, no, let's not bring it up. And I'm like, why? Why would you not want to bring it up? This doesn't make sense. Sunset is the most, what is the word I'm looking for? The expert, the best, what is considered an expert on magic in your world. She could help you with this. Like, why would you not want to? And then there's the story of Gaia Everfree. And everyone's like, well, she could be an Equestrian being from, or she could be a being of magic from Equestria. And then other characters start getting powers. Like, that's when that's when I realized, whoa, hey, it's not Twilight. Um, ev everybody's getting powers. But Twilight's like, no, it must be me. And I'm like, why do you think it's you, Twilight? Because you got your powers first? You... This, this, that didn't make sense to me. And here's why it didn't make sense. Twilight is supposed to be the one who has a history of studying, 
of science of mathematics and understanding what's going on like follow and the way science works is you follow the facts to make conclusions like that's the way science works twilight was being thrown in her face various clues that it wasn't her and she was insisting that it's her as somebody with a scientific background like that that did not make sense to me and again i can understand that if like the embarrassment or the fear of midnight sparkle still being in her which by the way is a stupid concept in itself because that <laughs> midnight sparkle is not necessarily a separate entity like i would like to think that she is but that that was twilight that was a part of twilight um but anyway, that's a whole nother conversation that I, I, I don't want to get too deep into. But in going with that, maybe she was scared. Maybe she was embarrassed. And that's why she didn't want to tell any of her friends. But like I said in the video, Sunset knows about this already. Twilight loses nothing from talking to Sunset. She loses nothing. She only gains by talking to Sunset. So it made no sense that she didn't want to talk to Sunset, that she didn't want to talk to the to the main six, and that she thought the powers were coming from her because there was too much information to say otherwise. And that was the that was the biggest issue when I first saw it. Now I have calmed down. It's still an issue, but I have calmed down, and it is not the biggest issue anymore. 